Peace, what it is. I'm finna read um, some black history you ain't never heard. <laughs> this, this is crazy. I'm gonna put it up on the uh, screen so you can see the story because I ain't gonna read all of it because it's kind of long. It's two stories. Trash man. It's two stories. You know what I'm saying? One me and I put it up on the screen. And then the other one is here. So I don't want to read them be too long. All right, but these are, this book is about ancient modern Britons. It's talking about the, um, what they're referring to as the gypsies, um, but it's basically black people of, 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 of uh, Britain, England. And this is the 1700s right here is what this story I'm about to read. These two stories I'm about to read, they're about the 1700s. And uh, I, it's it's crazy. So, you you I think you'll you'll get it. So, it says such skirmishes. Now, let me kind of set it up. It's talking about it's different. Like uh, they used to travel in like groups. You know, like uh, you know they say people are nomadic. Like the um, they said like the American Indians would travel from place to place, living teepees and shit like that. So they they say that's, that's how they used to be over there. And they would travel in clans and groups, and they would get into it with each other, right? And so they telling about some stories that have went have passed because this book is was written in like eighteen sixty something. So the story is like a hundred or a hundred or hundred fifty years old at this time. It's written now; it's three hundred years old. So they, you understand what you're about to hear? Some fight, some some set. It sounded like. <laughs> Yeah, ancient, well, I guess not ancient, right here. set tripping, basically. So I figured to the extreme, though. So listen. So it's like such skirmishes among the gypsies are still common and were formerly still more so. And also, I'm going to skip a couple words and see because I just want to put it on the screen because it's kind of a, it's written in kind of old English a little bit in some in some senses. So there's there's a there was a story current in Tavordale. But we cannot give a place and date. The gang of them, that a gang of them came to a solitary farmhouse and as, and as is usual, took possession of some waste outhouse. The family went to church on Sunday and expecting no harm from their visitors. So this band of gypsies, and gypsies short for Egyptians, um, I need to correct this one this time, um, Try, they travel and they go to farm to farm and they will post up in people's farm and they will provide things for the people's house so they can stay there for a few nights and then they'll move on. This was like a custom, okay? So it said, the uh, the family went to church on Sunday expecting no harm from their visitors, the gypsies, okay? Left only one female to look after, look after the home. And I want you to think about something. Think like you, they want you, this book is showing, telling you how all these ancient people were black people. But just think, like, they telling you how these gypsies were dark-skinned people, and they go into these other people's house. You really think them was, like, white people? You, you know what I'm saying? It's black folks traveling to different black folks. You know, just people had different ideologies. They lived differently. Okay, but in this book, does say that. So, anyway. Um, family went to church. She was praying. <laughs> so, they went to church, expecting no harm from their visitors. Left only one female to look after the house. She was pr she was presently alarmed by the noise of shouts, oaths, blows, and all the turmoil of the gypsy battle. It seems another clan had arrived in the earlier seconds and gave them battle. The poor woman shut the door, remained in the house in a great ap in great apprehension until the door being suddenly forced open. One of the combatants rushed into the apartment, and she perceived with horror as his left hand had been struck off. That is old hand out. With without speaking to or looking at her, he thrust the bloody stump <laughs> with desperate resolution against glow against the glowing bars of the grate. Like a hot iron. <laughs> Stop the blood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> with desperate resolution against the gun. Having staunched the blood by actual cautery, I can't pronounce that word. Seized then seized the knife. Used for killing sheep, which lay on the shelf and rushed out back to join the combat. <laughs> so this cat got his hand took out. He got his hand cut off. Ran in the house. Burned it. 
the, the, the stub. So it stopped bleeding. Grabbed the knife, ran back out and get his leg. <laughs> Why does it trip me out? Um, all was, was over before the family returned from church. Both gangs had decamped, carrying properly their dead, wounded along with them. The place where they fought was absolutely soaked with blood <laughs> and exhibited among the other reliques of fray. The amputated hand of the wrench whose desperate conduct the maid servant had witnessed. I mean, he left his hand on they, these niggas getting it. They get, they get. <laughs> wow. Cut his hand. Okay, so this is his next story. This next one is this. This next one is funny. So it says, let me, let me skip along. It was the month of May that the gang of gypsies came up to Et Etrick. One party of them lodged at a farmhouse so called Scotch Keller, and the rest of them went forward to cross here. Another farm about a mile further along, right? So one stand here, one stand here, right? Groups of people. It's probably like 15 of them in each group. We're talking about probably families, you know what I'm saying? A grandma, two kids, with they two kids. You understand what I'm saying? With their families, and they, you know, you know how we do it. Okay, uh, one play, okay, uh, uh, for another mile along among the latter, which is the one that was down the road, one played the pipes and the violin, delighting all that heard him, and the gang, principally on his account, were very civilly treated. So he, he a musician. He come there, you know, making everybody dance. The next day, the two parties again joined, so they came back together, right? Proceeding westward in body, right? So one clan, two clan. They were about thirty souls in all and had fine horses. On a slopping, sloping grassy spot, which I know very well, on the farm of Brock Hawkspig, whatever, they halted to rest. Here, the hapless musician quarreled with another, with another of the tribe about a girl who I think was his sister, was well, sister of the latter, sister to the latter. So he got into it. He got into it with somebody about a girl. He, he trying to holler at a girl. He do by last my sister. Don't say nothing to her. He like, man, whatever I say. You know what I'm saying? She, yeah. <laughs> you can see it. You can see it. You can see it, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, sister of the latter. Weapons were instantly drawn. <laughs> and the piper, <laughs> listen. Dude, okay, listen. And the piper, losing courage and knowing that he was no match for his antagonist, fled. <laughs> like... Nigga, I sing. I ain't finna fight you, nigga. Ha! Nigga, start chopping. <laughs> the other pursuing close at his heels. <laughs> Let me let this go. <laughs> so he running. The other dude start chasing him, right? Uh, let me see. Pursuing where I was at. Cause it's here. <laughs> Listen. For a full mile and a half, they continued to strain most violently, the one running for his life, the other thirsting for blood, until they came to the cross hills, a place where they had left. This <laughs> nigga ran around the city for a mile and a half. And dude chasing him with the sword. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> So they run out of the circle, came back to where they left, right? The family were all gone. The family, the family, they waited around for them niggas. I ain't been waiting on them niggas. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. The family were all gone, either the sheep or or the peats, save, except for one serving girl who was baking bread at the kitchen table <laughs> when the piper rushed in, breathless into the house. <laughs> She screamed, ass. What's the matter? He answered, Nay, say if to you, nay, say if to you, for God's sakes, hide me. She like, what's wrong? You shut up, shit. Hide me, isn't it crazy? <laughs> okay, hide me. With that, he essayed to hide himself behind a saw barrel that stood in the corner. But his ruthless pursuer instantly entering, his panting portrayed him. <laughs> Heard him breathing. The ruffian pulled him out by his hair, dragged him into the middle of the floor, and ran through the body with his dirk, his sword. Killed it. Straight like that. In the, in the woman house. This. The piper never asked for mercy, but cursed the other as long as he had breath. <laughs> Can't you see it? He's stabbing him. 
You motherfucker, fuck you. <laughs> he died. Motherfucker, you nigga. I was good. I swear. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, the piper never had some. Yeah. The girl was struck motionless with horror, but the murderer told her never to heed or regret it, for no ill should happen to her. By the time the breath was well out of the unfortunate musician, some more of the gang had arrived, bringing with them a horse on which carried back the body, buried it on the spot where they first got into it. His grave is marked by one stone at the head and another at the foot, which the gypsies themselves placed and still looked upon as, by the rustics as a dangerous place for walking ghosts today. <laughs> Man, ain't that shit crazy? That was, ain't that crazy? I thought that was a crazy story. Don't that sound like something that kind of something like we we would do? You know what I'm saying? Does that, I mean, just that story that sound like some black folks shit or some white folks shit? It's Britons or ancient Egyptians. Well, whatever. <laughs> Get the book. It got more stuff like that in there. It's hilarious stuff. Great stuff. Black history you ain't never heard. Peace.